Good morning and welcome to a, I guess, the first of the summer editions of Tip Off. I hope you are well. Uh, since I've seen you last, I picked up a brand new scar on my forehead. A lot of fun stuff. Um, that was from reaching down to pick up, you know, spilled yogurt. Hit my head on the chair. Blood bursting out. Only happens on a Sunday. So, super glued together. Didn't really work. Now I have a nice scar on my forehead. So there's your little story for your visual people on YouTube. I hope you're well. I uh, apologize that we haven't put many of these out. But frankly, I'm not even sure where this one's going. Locked on Jazz has been a victim of the lockout. I'm pretty limited in what I'm able to say. I've had a lot of tweets and a lot of questions and a lot of emails. And I haven't responded much of them. I'm, I'm really I'm hamstrung. Uh, I apologize for that. It's not my choice. But that's... The world we live in, as the Pac-12 media day happens today, as the NFL lockout opens up, uh, I'm going to try to jump in a little bit more regularly with stuff. And obviously, as much as we try to be NBA-focused, there's not a lot to talk about. Um, I'll give you some thoughts in a second on some of what's going on, but uh, we'll touch on the other things. So welcome back to the tip-off. I'm not sure with what regularity this will take place, but I'm in town for most of the rest of the summer. Minor travels here and there, which will limit things, but otherwise we should have them to some extent. i got to go out to San Francisco to see my Giants play. I still have yet to see a game in AT&T Park, and I'm going to do that this summer. So uh, They're playing well. Uh, fear not, I, as much as I would like to talk some baseball, none of you would. So I will not do that to you. For those of you who want baseball, maybe we'll do, you know, me and PK can do like a baseball podcast so we can finally talk about the game we like. Uh, let's touch on a bunch of things. NFL free agency just started. It's, it's about 10 a.m. Eastern time, 8 o'clock our time. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, there, there's two things that are going to go on here. There's going to be the marquee thing, which is the quarterbacks. But then I think you've really got to ask yourself on the quarterbacks, Kevin Cobb, Kyle Orton, and I know Cobb's not a free agent, but he'll move. Hasselbeck, Vince Young, Carson Palmer, Donovan McNabb. Which of those actually make you win? I mean, there's going to be a lot of hubbub about all these guys, but I'm not sure that any of those guys moves the meter in a large way toward wins, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, Hasselbeck has some experience and, and maybe could really help the Niners Kyle Orton, to me, is the best quarterback of that bunch, but none of them are in that elite class, which is going to get you. So they're really just filling time, and to some extent, I think that'll be a lot of talk about nothing. The second thing that's going to take place, and this is going to be really hard to decipher, but what's going to be interesting is if you look at, because the cap came down $8 million, and because of some other things, there are more free agents on the market than ever before. So anytime supply and demand kicks in, then, in advantage to the owners. And so you're going to see a, bu a, a bunch of low-end signings that I think are going to make the difference. You know, when, I, when, I've been cover when I covered the NFL, what jumped out to me is with the limited uh, roster, what, 56 guys, each of those guys has got to uh, contribute to a win somewhere along the way, whether it's the interception as the backup linebacker when the – outside linebackers are both hurt in the third quarter and he makes the play, whether it's the special teams kick return, whether it's the special teams fumble, recovery, whatever it might be, every guy on the roster has got to contribute if you're going to be a Super Bowl level team. Look at Green Bay last year and the amount of injuries they had, and yet each guy along the way still contributed in some capacity and then finally won the Super Bowl for them despite the plethora of injuries. So a lot of the signings, whether it's backup linemen, backup linebackers, uh, an extra safety that are going to – the safety that can play both safety and corner that are going to get picked up in the late days, I think are going to be a lot more important than these Santonio San Holmes or Randy Moss or high-profile fantasy football signings that we're all going to keep an eye on. Uh, Pac-12 Media Day hits in today as well. I'm very curious to see what the national media or the Pac-12 media reaction to the Utes is. I mean, I don't really know where, if I was to fill out, if I had the privilege, as Bagley did, to fill out a, a media poll, I don't know what I'm answering in regards to the Utes. I think in that, you know, in the South, I think I'm putting USC 1, despite their probation, Arizona State 2. Arizona's got some nice things, 3, and am I suddenly putting Utah 4, UCLA 5, Colorado 6? Maybe. Um, and that might be how I expect to see Utah turn out. Utah's just in a different world. Even if you just go to the ESPNU top 100 recruited players, 
I think like 38 of them or 40 of them have committed and eight of them are going to Pac-12 schools right now. None of those are to Utah. You're just in a different talent level than you've ever been before, and it's going to take some time to ramp up. As much as we think Utah should be fine, and I, and I do feel, as I've said numerous times, when you look at their schedule, uh, after the first week of the year, I don't think they're going to have a spread on the schedule that's, that's more than seven points, unless UCLA really hits the tank. Um, the, the, they're going to, I just don't see them having a spread that's more than seven points anywhere along the way. They may be favored by three at home and on the road be a five-point dog on this and that. They're going to be very, very close. I think they'll wear out a little bit as the year goes on, as I've said, um, and probably have some stunning losses along the way that you just don't anticipate. But it will be – it's curious to see to me – how the the new the Pac-12 media reacts to Utah that they don't know very well. It's easy to dismiss Colorado. They have no track record that they're able to do anything right now. So what are they going to do with Utah? I think that's I think that's going to be the most interesting thing. The other one that I'm just you know keeping an eye on is just some of the talent level positions, things of that nature. Uh, Utah's secondary uh, move, moving guys. You know, because they, they move Bletch into a linebacker, they, they've got such kind of a gap there um, in a league that's got pretty good wide receivers. I mean, when Oregon suddenly is one of your least experienced wide receiver crews, uh, it's going to be curious to see how that secondary reacts. That would be my largest concern, but that's something we're not going to know in, until September, maybe even a little bit into October. Finally, in regards to the lo- NBA lockout, I, I've kind of talked about this a little or written about a little in tweeted about it and appreciate all these you're still following this whole idea of players playing overseas is i think it's much to do about nothing i'm surprised the way reporters are covering it but i guess they don't have anything else to cover Uh, i don't see it impacting the leverage of the negotiations in any way shape or form and here's why because no one believes the players are staying there forever no one believes the players are making enough money to make it worth it the amount of players that impact wins and losses in the NBA is few. The amount of players that win the that impact ticket sales is few. So those are the only players that matter. It's not as though Dwight uh, or you know any of those players or any of the players being talked about are going to end up going to Europe and staying there permanently. So it's not as though the NBA owners are fearful that this is the way that there's some future there that they're going to lose their league and. This is about the NBA owners getting a deal that they feel is good for their league for the long term. And unfortunately, that means that they are willing to take a very substantial short term, at least in my opinion, the way I'm reading things, a very substantial short term pain to be able to get a better deal like the NFL just did with a 10 year deal. Um, That's, you know, that's just the way I'm reading clips and quotes and things of that nature. And And it seems to be that. Uh, this whole idea of overseas play is irrelevant. But none of those, none of those players are going to that are being talked about going over there are going to crack money wise because of the lockout. They may, if they are, they got serious problems that they'll crack anyway. Um, but so I don't. There's no money leverage. It's not as though they're going to stay there forever. So I'm kind of lost on on this whole play. But I get you got to do something. It's all part of a negotiation. But I think this one's a pretty empty one. All right, tip off is back. I don't know how often, but and I don't actually know where it's going to go. It's going to go on YouTube, and then I, I, I don't even know if I upload this if it goes to my iTunes account anymore. I, I, I have no idea. So it'll be at 1320kfan.com. Tip off, and uh, hope you're good. Talk to you soon. I'm on Google Plus now as well, uh, at David Locke. <clears throat> so I don't, you know, it's just another another mechanism. See you guys.